This is Anime Archaeology Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We tell you about it and explain the terms and tropes behind this unique medium. Thanks for joining us. Hello everyone, welcome to the broadcast. Hope you're having a good day wherever you happen to be right now. Um, It's been quite the exciting time here at the broadcast tower. The quantum holographic backup systems are okay. I've done a triple check on the system and everything's all archived and, and fine. So good the thing there. Now I can start kind of digging a little deeper into what happened there but you know hopefully we're fine um actually had a neat thing come up this week um got a flyer there's going to be an arts and culture festival not far from the broadcast tower um not really showing up properly there but the weirdness with the camera here but uh yeah so looking forward to that i've been asked to speak at the festival which is pretty cool i gotta figure out what i'm gonna actually talk they've asked me to bring some artifact and speak to that and so that's gonna be an interesting one uh gotta figure that out um not often get a chance to actually sit down and and talk with other fans and so i want to do something something special for them something really helpful and informative um also an interesting time because we're going to talk about the 1979 anne of green gables anime today you got steve on the line should be really interesting. I've seen uh, this anime before. I absolutely adore it. And so looking forward to that. And in fact, I should uh, talk a bit about behind the scenes and what happened to make this anime happen. So let's do that. Let's head downstairs and go behind the scenes. All right, let's get behind the scenes of the Anne of Green Gables anime. Now, your first question might be, why would they make an Anne of Green Gables anime in Japan? Well, that asks how successful and popular is the book in Japan, and the answer is quite popular. A couple reasons for that, uh, and the reasons go back to the original release of Anne in Japan. And the backstory to this is, amazing. I'd love to get into it, but we were trying to focus on the anime here. Um, There's a whole secret translation project by a Japanese translator uh, during World War II, kind of on a pain of death. Uh, Hanako Muraoka was trying to translate this. Um, Again, amazing stuff if you want want to dig in. Suffice to say that ultimately, after the war, um, she got that published. And the reason was the American occupation forces were trying to change the um, the children's literature available to kids in Japan. A lot of it pre and, and during war were very uh, imperialist, very, you know, sacrifice yourself for the good of the nation. And there was a time to get away from that. And of course, the occupation forces were more, promo- more familiar with Western literature. So when Maraoka appeared with this translation of Anne of Green Gables, they were like, oh yeah, let's definitely get that out there. Uh, The translation came out in 52. It was added to the Japanese school curriculum in 1953. So a lot of kids grew up reading Anne of Green Gables as like assigned reading in school. Uh, So you have that as its own force of a lot of Japanese kids just being familiar with the novel. Then in 19, um, then you, you move on to the 70s and you get World Match Beast Theater. This was a series of anime adaptations of classic world children's literature, whether they were super familiar with those in Japan or not. Um, the first one kind of retroactively being an adaptation of Heidi, Girl of the Alps. Uh, that was done in 1974 by Isao Takahata, who'd go on to direct this Anne of Green Gables adaptation that we're about to go, go into. Um, that was kind of retroactively made the first world masterpiece theater anime because it was so well-loved, so well-received, and so they adapted more of these things. So you get that. Um, So, A, book already very popular, B, series of adaptations of classic children's literature, and becomes an obvious choice. Now, who do they bring together to actually make this? Um, A couple of uh, amazing folks involved, lots of amazing folks involved. I'm going to do a separate 
segment. We're going to talk later about the staff involved. I think that that's going to be an interesting deep dive. Um, suffice to say, the director was Isao Takahara, um, who you will probably recognize that name. Hayao Miyazaki, as well, uh, was, was involved. Again, pretty recognizable name. Also, Yoshifumi Kondo, who would uh, go on to become a you know, veteran at Studio Ghibli and worked on a lot of cool stuff at Studio Ghibli. So, pretty amazing staff involved on Anne of Green Gables. And um, uh, the series continues to be popular. Anne has, you know, uh, remained at the forefront, if you will, of, of, of its success. There was a short-lived uh, Can Canadian World theme park in Hokkaido in the late 80s, where there was a whole uh, Anne of Green Gables area there, they would actually um, hire like 13 year old red headed Canadian girls and bring them over to walk around the theme park in pigtails like Anne of Green Gables and like wave at people. Like that's how big Anne was. And in 1992, uh, a Japanese author, Okuda Miki, moved to Canada to live out an authentic Anne Shirley experience for over a year and ended up publishing several books about her experiences. So Anne has continued to be a, um, a phenomenon in, in, in Japanese culture, uh, even, you know, kind of outsized to its, its success in other places. There's kind of a, a bit of a, a remarkable staying power for Anne in the Japanese consciousness. And so thus we get an Anne of Green Gables anime. So hope you found that useful and helpful. Uh, let's get on back up to the tower and move on from here. All right, again, I hope you found that useful. I've um, been thinking more about this arts and culture festival and I think I have an idea about what I'm gonna bring. Um, I was thinking of bringing some anime, I was thinking of bringing some figurines, but I think I'm going to bring a book. Not just a manga, a book. Um, more on that after the analysis, but I uh, need to get, go ahead and bring Steve in so we can dive into Anne of Green Gables episode one, so uh, let's switch over. All right, Steve, it looks like we are connected. Uh, looks like right. the signal's pretty good. How are things up there? We're doing all right so far, doing all right. How about you guys down there? Uh, no major complaints. Um, still got a few bugs in the system, so trying to, we're getting, like literally physical bugs um, uh, like in oh, our geez. system. So we're trying to do that. Um, I've learned not to use bug spray on sensitive hardware. Not good. So. Oh no! Yeah. You don't want it looking like this. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So, Be careful. Trying to figure out all that that stuff, but I think I think we're fine. All um, right. Good. 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 So yeah, looking forward to checking out the 1979 Anne of Green Gables. Heard good things. Let's, let's see what we got. Here we go. All right. Let's talk. Like, here's our literally the first shot of the anime. Obviously, it's the opening credits. Very upbeat music. Yes. Considering the overall like themes of Anne of Green Gables, that makes me feel good that, <laughs> <laughs> that this is not going to be just dark, depressing the entire time. Hoping. Yeah, um, and, and I don't see any Gundams anywhere, so this is ooh. yes, this is positive. Yes, uh, uh, nice. Also interesting that we're getting Anne's shadow. Yeah, uh, like a reflection of her. And I'm not sure what Takahata is trying to symbolize there, other than that Anne, it, this is not, it's not an anime. <laughs> it's not an anime. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not, not in the least. Um, maybe that we're kind of reflecting on Anne's life, or that this is just a, a version of events, this is a shadow of the actual events. I don't know. But it's just, no. Yeah. Odd. It should be pointed out, the animation style here, where we have a yeah. fairly f simple plane because there is so much movement, right? We're, we're, right. We've got this going the entire time and we're, we've got the horse coming into frame. So there's all the animation of just it continuing to progress. It's not just they're sliding the animation forward. We're actually seeing a change in, in direction. And then the trees come up and fill yes. 
it. So it's a big dramatic shot. What are we kind of promising here? I, I think what we're seeing, and again, not not entirely, not entirely sure um, what all of the, the themes here, but um, she's flying in in the air. Yes. So this must represent kind of flights of fancy, right? The imagination of Anne, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And also, she's smiling. Yay. She's happy. This is nice. Although it should be pointed out, it is a an upbeat expression. It's a positive expression, um, but it's not like big happy joy joy. Right. Which I think is pretty representative of the character. Hmm. So think about this animation right here. Yeah. She's going through the. It's she's not in front of the branches. True. She's behind her. It would be easier and cheaper for them to, to for her to be in front and then just pull the cell, whatever. Mm -hmm. But she is going through the branches. There are branches on the other side of her, and there's branches in front of her. So we're, this is not easy. No. And think of how long this shot is going. Yeah. You know, th they may be reusing this in some like they may have it as sort of an infinite loop, but there's a lot of branches that they have to make sure are moving correctly for seconds at a time. You're right. Yeah. That's just <clears throat> gorgeous. Yes. Um, also, we have seem to have transitioned from like spring to fall. Mm hmm. Uh, so I'm guessing this is kind of Anne's life. She's going from this kind of featureless plane into the spring of her um, real childhood. <laughs> You know, for those familiar with Anne of Green Gables, right? She has a not the greatest early childhood, and then things start to pick up in Green Gables, uh, and then we move into uh, uh, you know autumn as she's starting to to grow more. Huh. And there we uh, go. Yeah, you're right. There's winter. Interesting. Um, is she older here? I can't tell. I think she's the same age. Know. Yeah. Maybe slightly older. She has like a little more rounded uh, face there. I can't tell. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. So she comes back to it, sticks the landing. Um, <laughs> right. Well, you know what's interesting is that she, as, as they have her going through the seasons, right? Yeah. They come back to basically summer. Is mm -hmm. what, yeah. is what I'm looking, interpreting here. But as she's going through through winter, um, we see. She turns her face to look back, and then she comes You're back right. forward. But we see, but we see her face. So she's kind of looking back, as as if to say, "Okay, that was then, and this is my future, and this is where I'm going." You're absolutely right, and I love the symbolism that she's she's not in a fairy tale uh, horse and carriage. Right? It's a very right. normal thing, but she still has that flight of fancy. Yes, right. She's still, you know, like. <laughs> literally a few feet off the ground um so that that marriage of the the somewhat practicality with the fact that she can she's still allowed to have her imagination now this is interesting for a couple of reasons one is that uh that's not really exactly like what she looks like in the anime right um large forehead um very detail on 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 the stuff and she has this like roundedness to her eyes um, mm -hmm. This is more like the illustrations from the book. Oh, um, well, does I, say the lake of uh, Lake of Shining Waters, which is what she calls the, water, the, yeah. the, the the lake there. So I'm assuming this is more referencing the, you know, bringing us back to the fact this is a book adaptation, reminding us um, this is what you're going to be getting in this anime. Um, also, I just got to say, and, and again, just the art here. Like the, the mm -hmm. twisting branches around here, all the flowers, the trees in the background, the colors of the sky and the the water. It's just unutterably gorgeous. Um, also interesting because the the bird on her hand. Uh, and mm -hmm. no Gakahata, that's probably some specific bird which has some poetic meaning. I don't know what it is. Um, well, but, Takahara just always assumes that we know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you should know this. You should know this. Um, but, like, Anne is not Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella. Um, and so, at least not in the, in, in, the, in the story itself. 
So right. I'm, I'm assuming this is more to connect us with Anne's dream world, like that, that very romantic side right. of her um, that she she's constantly imagining in her head. Hmm. Also, and I'm, again, I'm not sure, but the little scroll work around, that kind of looks to me like wallpaper pattern mm -hmm. in the scroll work. And again, I'm wondering if that's kind of con connecting the domesticity of Green Gables with her imagination. Not sure. It's just an interesting pattern to have. Yeah. All right, so here's our opening shot. And Takahata has decided to start literally very high level. Um, and it should be pointed out, and it, which is often lost on Western audiences of these things. Canada is not a standard place that Japanese children are used to. Um, <laughs> no. A lot of these vistas, and obviously there's exposure to media in general, but trying to ground our audience in the visual style of this location is very uh, important. Kind of reminds me of your Porco Rosso where you have all these big shots of the Italian vistas of the water and so forth to remind us this is not Tokyo Bay, this is not, you know, other things. Right, this is not Osaka, this is not, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do appreciate, so, again, the lesser animator, we're literally panning up this very still shot, but they still made sure to animate the steamer that's going up and the little sparkles in the water out in the distance and it's oh, yeah. just enough to give you a little bit of visual flair and to keep it interesting to look at it should be pointed out wow. again yeah so we have a narrator um something i always found odd the narrator is male yeah it's true why not you get a female narrator do. for yeah for this? um you think but uh, all right, there's our first shot of her. And again, I do think this is smart to start very high level, kind of zoom in shot by shot on the steamer, and then zoom in, getting this shot of Anne from a distance, um, where an eagle-eyed viewer knows what that is, but a six-year-old watching this is just absorbing the um, environment, you know, what people look like. The narrator says, prepares for her new life with a hopeful heart. Does that look like a hopeful heart to you? Not really. And I was kind of remarking on the shabbiness of the clothes there. Yep. And very plain and just mm -hmm. a little bit of apprehension there. Yeah. Almost a sackcloth dress. Very simple. Um, she has a hat, which, you know, for a... Actually, I don't know what these social mores were at the time for like at what point is it improper for a girl to not wear a hat in public so right. this might be just required dress for a 11 year old ish girl i don't know but also notice to that point they don't match right but it's just a hat and a dress so yeah interesting that they and she's framed yeah, yeah. They, they add the frame around her um so again, clearly Takahata is like, you may not know what this story is, so I'm going to give you a little bit of extra focus on, pay attention to this girl. <laughs> it's going to be important. Also, why grapes? What do grapes symbolize? Hmm. I wonder if the symbolism isn't that grapes get turned into wine. So... Uh, this is about okay. the transformation of, you know, childhood to adulthood, um, immaturity to maturity, right? Those, that kind of idea there. Hard to say. Okay. To your point, this does not look like anywhere in Japan, does it? <laughs> oh, it's definitely not. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Uh, about I, that. I, I think, yeah. Um... So, A, the narrator is throwing a lot at the audience, right? Um, uh -huh. This is the classic 
children's story narrator of, you know, we need to tell you all the things, all the backstory. Granted, at least this is not entirely telling you what's on the screen. Um, <laughs> right. But it's not bad. But also notice what, what's happening with Anne here. Um, the woman keeps moving forward and Anne keeps having to, like, catch up because she keeps getting mm -hmm. distracted by what's going on. Um, so already getting that little indication that Anne's, you know, not as uh, connected to mainstream society and what a little girl is supposed to do. Definitely not worldly. No. No. A little, little more focused on other things. Okay, here it is again. So I'm assuming the grapes are just th their motif for, you know, any character, but that is a right. larger motif for this story. A visual motif for the, any character. Pretty large motif for the story. And again, this is a very simple thing, but you think about all the different things happening in this shot. You've got the horse animating. You've got the ground and the house nearby that are moving slightly as we're moving, uh, continuing the shot, while also trying to keep the two women who are, you know, a separate drawing matched with the, the ground. It's not a, you know, it's, it's a simple little moment in here, but technically there's a lot you gotta do to make it happen. Yes. So I don't know what it is, but I've seen this exact expression in multiple Miyazaki works. Yes. And there's just something about the slightly mismatched eyes, the frustration. It's kind of a Lupin esque thing. No, but yes, that's what I was thinking. Um, it's kind of fun to see that here. Zenig this is Zenigata's great grandfather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we notice a few things here. We notice that, again, he doesn't, he's not really uh, a people person. Uh, and so a few things happen. The, the women see him, they turn and like go to interact with him in a, a chat he like raises his hat and keeps on moving doesn't stop to talk doesn't even really kind of acknowledge them but at least does what's necessary socially to, to, to be polite yes mm -hmm. and again you know think of how we're positioning things here we have the woman the girl and Anne is focused outside all right so here's our first shot of green gables on the inside not the most colorful of houses. Yeah, I was gonna say not exactly dour, but very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is to convey like we are farmers, yep. so we don't have a lot of stuff and we don't have a lot of color, but we do have these things. Mm -hmm. So it's a very very not Spartan existence, but yeah. a very simple one. Exactly agreed. And again, I gotta, I gotta say. Narrator is getting paid here. I mean... <laughs> yeah, no joke. <laughs> Just lots of, of backstory. And, uh... I, yeah. I feel like at some point he goes, and the secret to life and happiness will be. <laughs> and, I, again, I suppose when you don't know the age of your audience necessarily, you don't know how much they can comprehend, there's a lot you got to get across. And so they're just going to give it to you. I do have to say... So I, there's an English dub of this, and I checked that out before I did this, and I, it had been a while since I had seen uh, Anne of Green Gables, and it comes on, and there's this narrator, and he's just constantly telling you things. I was like, uh, I hate how Western content creators think that kids are stupid, and they have to like, wedge this narrator in to explain all this stuff. And I was like, I was gonna complain about this, went back to this episode, says the exact same thing in both. Like it's, it's almost yes. word for word. It's like, no, no, it's, it's in there too. A couple things to note. Uh, first off, Marilla's reaction to Rachel coming in. Doesn't stand up, doesn't do anything, it just continues with her knitting. So, A, this is clearly, and but, but Rachel isn't, like she's surprised at what's going on, but she's clearly not offended. Right. So you get the sense that this is a, a, a very comfortable relationship, but that also Marilla just does not stand on ceremony, right? Right. Um, you also notice how Rachel glances at the table briefly. She's surprised mm -hmm. the good china is out. Yes. So she now knows something is important. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, 
you also wonder if, and I, I may be reading too much into this, but if she's like, even adopting a boy wouldn't be enough to get Marilla to get the nice china out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, this must be a big deal for them. More than they're telling us, and sees something outside, turns to ask what it is, and the expression seems to be, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Almost like, oh my god, will you please stop? Yeah, exactly. You know. So these words are certainly contrasting with, you know, we right. see Anne on her way, you know, she's not a teenage boy, um, but then to kind of twist the knife with, you know, we can also give him the warmth and proper education of a home. It's like, Clearly, that is the one thing she wants, <laughs> but is being set up for disappointment. Also, I just realized I think her the tip of her hat is pressing up against the glass, like she's that interested yes. in what's outside. Oh. So, like, one of the other interesting things is that that this is conveying uh, mm. a couple things actually. These, mm. these past couple scenes is first of all a practicality of all this, mm -hmm. like. Yes, we're adopting a son now. To us, ad adopting a, 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 a child is like, we want a child to raise and love and to carry on our name, whatever. She says that second. <laughs> right. <laughs> True. Right? Yeah. Right? The first thing she says is, oh, he can help us around with the with the, with the barn and work and all this mm -hmm. stuff because we are getting older. Yeah. And this is something they show in it. She's older. Matthew's older. The, even Rachel, the woman is coming in, is older. Yeah. So you know, this is this is all, and the fact that they are brother and sister is probably further confusing Rachel as to like your brother and sister, not husband and wife. Yeah. Why are you two getting a kid? Mm -hmm. That might be you know one of the one of the things that Rachel's confused about. Yeah. But you know, you you, you, see, you see this, and again, it's kind of like here is farm life. Here mm -hmm. is this what this looks like. So here you yep. go. Yeah, absolutely. The, the the pragmatic has to take precedence over yes. everything else. You're right. Boy, did you call that on the hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gosh. And the expression on her face, again, the just, I, I love how they're getting across the, uh, the multitude of emotions going on here where she's not happy, she's not sad. She's, she's hopeful but not letting her hopes get up too high. Ugh. Almost as if she's trying to understand everything first. Yeah. And it's just very, when you're overwhelmed, what do you, what is most people's reset position? It's, it's just like, I'm just gonna chill for a moment because I'm a little bit overwhelmed at what that, what's going on around me. Exactly, yeah. Um, also, I just realized uh, her hair um, mm -hmm. kind of, escaping from her hat, right? Yes. Um, not carefully combed, not carefully up, up in braids or anything. Obviously, the braids in the back, but right. the, 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 the slightly disheveled appearance just adding to all that. I love the addition of the step. Yeah. Just that little detail that was a thing where the train was mm -hmm. a little too high for a normal person to be able to just step up on it, so they would put out a little step that you could step down on. What does Anne do? She does not orient to the people. She does not orient to the station. She orients to the nature environment. Right. Right. Ah. And we see a smile. She yep. likes it. Mm -hmm. Not a single word of dialogue. Mm -mm. But we know exactly what's gone on through her head. Again, see what we're communicating to. Uh, the train's about to leave. Um, Mrs. Spencer has made the arrangements, well, let's say made the arrangements, she's basically like, is this the spot? Yes, okay. Um, and that's not against Mrs. Spencer, she, this is what she has to do, is to drop her off here. And she says, okay, wait for uh, Matthew to come pick you up. Anne sees this, she's, again, been distracted by everything else, and she tries to do the right thing. She says, yes, Mrs. Spencer, and she tries to run up to kind of say goodbye to Mrs. Spencer, what happens? Immediate error. Right. Something goes wrong, which she now has to deal with. She recognizes the problem. Uh oh, this is the thing. And she, she's not unaware. You know, imagine Camille. Um, 
<laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> um, but then she, she initially tries to fix it, realizes she can't do that, and then by the time she is able to do anything, it's too late. Right. Um, again, for anyone familiar with Anne of Green Gables, kind of the microcosm of Anne's life right there. Cries <laughs> <Just laughs> do the right thing, things that don't work out, and things kind of fall apart. Oh, poor girl. Also note, she says goodbye to Mrs. Spencer and Lily. So it's not that she's unaware of the people around her. Like, she's, she, she cares about these people. It's just not the first thing on her mind. Right. And to your point, like, what a transformation here. Um, yeah. Suddenly quite happy. That's interesting. Yeah. Smiles. Smile disappears. Then the smile comes back. Um, I'm assuming what that means is reality sets in that she's alone. But then she decides to enjoy that. So obviously setting up some comedy there, right? Um, I also you also have to wonder how much this is playing off of, you know, was that story of the orphan child factual at all? Right, or is this a gossiping hen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, let's just think about the imagery here. After yeah. all of that that Rachel says, and all all that sort of confirmation that this may not be the the best choice for them. To have this shot pulled back such a distance, um, really making you feel Anne's solitude. Even as, like, the sun's going down a bit. So, okay, so here's something interesting. Hmm. To me, she's looking out, and she's looking down at the town below. And to me, she's, like, maybe wondering in her head, which house? Yeah. Where Where am I going to be? Where Where's, what does the future hold for me? She's at a train station. Train stations have benches. True. Why is she sitting on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm assuming the benches are facing the train. Mm. And sh she wants to stay kind of vigilant, right? She wants to see what's, what's coming up. I'm, I'm assuming this is a little bit of trauma here. Where yeah. she has been such at the mercy of forces beyond her control for so long she wants as much knowledge of what's about to happen to her as she can, so she's not going to be you know, sitting with her back to what might be happening. Mm. This is something that I think some of our audience wouldn't be aware of. Um, this was a very common thing to do, right? It was for kids to walk on the, the rail, especially and again, something that you, you wouldn't understand, at this time trains did not go 90 miles an hour. Um, right. So, if a train was coming, you would know and be able to hop off the tracks. So, this was a relatively safe thing to do, especially for kids, but it was a common, especially like a, a not a dare, but a let's just walk along the track kind of thing. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So, she was bored. She looks to the side again to check again to see if something's happened. And... It's almost like now she's like, okay, I can now enjoy myself and give myself over to this activity. Maybe it wasn't so much that she's checking out to see if anybody's showing up or anything, or maybe she's just like going, is there anybody there to catch me mm. doing what I'm doing? Good question. Good point. Maybe, maybe, maybe she's, you know, at the orphanage, she's always getting her knuckles wrapped yep. because she's not paying attention or she's doing something she shouldn't be doing or just enjoying herself. Yeah. <laughs> God forbid she'd be a girl, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. <clears throat> we don't allow children here at the orphanage. <laughs> mm. We don't allow laughter and play. <laughs> and no dialogue. Right. We just keep going on and on, and because and, we don't need any. Like, this is literally what's happening, is girl waiting for guy, guy on way for girl. That's all we need. That's artistry there. So Anne turns to look at something. We cut to this reverse shot, and notice how they've positioned this tree here. All of these other, like, pines around it, but like, there's one lovely, like, pink, pinkish-purplish 
tree yeah. in the middle that just draws your eye, but they didn't put it in the center of the screen, but just mm. off enough to be like, that must be where Anne is looking. That's great work. Also the fact you notice she's not a bundle of nerves. She can just sit there in silence with herself, observing her surroundings, perfectly content. So f as much of issues she was having earlier with the, the bag and so forth and so on, it's not that she's uncomfortable with herself. Right. Hmm. That picture of a tree, she's fi fixating on that tree. Mm. And it's an odd tree amongst the others. Even when there's other trees other than, than pines You're right. around it. It's still foliage, green, and all that. And, and that tree just kind of stands out of place. And she's probably kind of looking at that and, you know, wondering if that's how she's going to be. Is she going to be out of place? Or, or is this, or is that has been what, what, what's been going on? And yeah. You know, so she's, there's some type of recognition there. Maybe that's like, and that can be, maybe she's almost comforted by that. I don't know. Yeah. Could be. That's a great point. Notice how they pace Matthew's walk. Mm -hmm. Deliberate, moving a little slow. You know, he gets there, but definitely not spry. All right, so I'm assuming what they're, what's going on here is she is so focused on that tree. Um, she's kind of just tuned out uh, around her. I mean, that horse and buggy was far enough away that it, it's a it would somewhat blend into the surroundings, but you'd hear it if you were really paying attention. Look at that reaction. <laughs> right, initial joy, and then when she sees him, uh, she pulls back. You know, why would she do that? Because she wouldn't know this is Matthew. Right, there's no miscommunication on her part. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if, again, that's a little bit of trauma of the... Oh, good, it's time for the next thing. What's going to happen? In the distance. And how do you do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we realize... It's, it's kind of, Go ahead. Go ahead. It's, um, it's the naturalism of this moment that this is what these characters would do, right? Like, she doesn't know... Right. Um, she knows this old couple is going to come to pick her up. She doesn't know this is that guy, Right. Right. Could be not certain. So she's kind of observing, and he's kind of like, well, I'm going to sit down for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I just think it's funny, like, how, or, I don't know if it's supposed to be funny, but mm. how, like, his initial reaction is just like the women. He's just like, ah, I, 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 I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go over here. And he just does the thing, because, of course, he's expecting a boy. So he's not expecting the girl. And he's not expecting Anne. And Anne isn't, like you said, isn't sure that this is the guy that mm -hmm. she's supposed to uh, go home. Okay, this sounds bad. This yeah, isn't the person who's adopting her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so she's just like, okay. And then he just doesn't say anything to her. He just walks away. <laughs> it's like, you know, you live in the orphanage all your life. You've been dumped at this station. This one dude just looks at you and just walks away. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> exactly. Cool. So her reaction is disappointment. And I appreciate that because it is such a child thing to do, right? You don't yeah. you know, you want that connection, you you want that you want that to be the person and you can't immediately let go of that feeling. No, you're absolutely right. <laughs> 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 and to our earlier point, Anne hasn't given up yet. Right? He gets up and goes, and she she stands up. Like, what's what's going on here? She's still kind of on high alert. Okay, this is amazing detail. Mm. The five thirty train. Look at the clock. Wow. Wow. You're right. Yeah. Oh, it's you, five after seven. Her. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that is impressive. Dang. I, did, I hadn't even noticed that. You're absolutely right. Well done. Man. And then mm -hmm. uh, the 
information they're giving us here is that Anne has been sitting out there for half an hour. Oh, yeah. Right, not just five minutes. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the contrast of uh, the station master getting us our first indication of Anne's uniqueness. Um, but then also, she's a case, I should say. <laughs> you know, oh boy, mm. Matthew, you're in for it. And so, and again, she's been sitting here for half an hour, so this, you know, right. <laughs> this would be of interest, um, but she's still on alert. <laughs> I also do love the, <laughs> um, maybe they were out of boys of the brand you wanted. That, um, that's so wrong on so many <laughs> levels. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that was like in the original novel as kind of a joke about, you know, mail order, you know, coffee or whatever, right. you know, like it's a, like you order a child out of a catalog. <laughs> It's not well, Nike, you got Reebok. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the unusual sweat drop. Mm hmm. Not something you often see in Takahata Miyazaki works, but it's a little bit of it there. All right, so you get this moment where Matthew turns to her, she stands up. We see Matthew's expression, and it's this sense of recognizing the responsibility of the moment. That you right. um, can't just ignore this girl. I do like that he slightly, like, leans back as she approaches. Right. <laughs> don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me. <laughs> uh, but she... Uh, I, go ahead. I was going to say, it's, it's, like, it's just like, he's almost like, too much energy. Too much energy <laughs> here. I, I can't, I can't, I can't. I just can't. And her reaction is, it is a very polite thing to say. <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. She's not like, you know, are you, whatever. It's, I suppose you are Mr. Matthew Cuthbert of Green Gables. Um, she may have rehearsed this. Like, it's, you know, it's exactly what you should say. That said, it was not common in this area for children to offer their hands when meeting an adult for the first time. Right. Um, so this is a little forward. And boy, doesn't that twist the knife. Yeah. Um, Getting to be afraid you Because yeah, you know what's going through his head right now. He's just like, how do I end this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, right. Like, how do I get out of this? How do I, how do I, it's it the horrible back thought of just like, how do I get this away from me? How yeah. do I get away from this? <laughs> and he's just getting sucked in exactly. more and more. Um, That's one thing you could do. You know, his knee-jerk reaction probably would have been, you could do that right now. <laughs> oh, but I, I do like that, that, okay, that introduction to Anne, being a sort of lateral thinker, shall we say. <laughs> and the fact that she's saying this, just like he would understand. Yeah. <clears throat> And by the way, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, big white marble ball, you know, just not be a bit afraid. And he's just like, wait, what? She's not stopping. She's not stopping. She hasn't taken a breath. She's just not. She, oh, 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 dear God, what's going on? There's a great line from this. We'll get to this in a, in a minute. Um, when they go down to the uh, the uh, the buggy, I counted. She says 500 words between this and getting down to the buggy. And oh th the next line is, um, uh, she stopped talking for two reasons. They reached the buggy, and she was out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's Anne right there. Yeah. So I think what's happening here is we're getting a little bit of Anne with the kind of the summoning of the cherry blossom petals. Um, but she's also bringing Matthew into her imagination a bit. So we're getting a little bit of, of shared experience there. Um, it's also convenient that you know, cherry blossoms are very familiar to Japanese children. Oh, yes. <laughs> he has no clue. He has, he's just like... I mean, he's not... A, look, let's, let's be honest here. He's not a bad person. He's no. just not a social person. Exactly. And he's getting sucked into this. And you can tell because... If he weren't, none of this would be surrounding him. So, so like to your point, he's he's in this 
thing that she this thing that she's describing and actually at this point he's not really backing out of it no you're right he's kind of enjoying it almost a little bit agreed um overwhelmed but it's certainly yeah, yes but, but but definitely like um appreciating it yeah enjoying it you're right yeah wow yeah like literally he clears his eyes to get himself back to reality wow you can see he's committed now uh where he's like yeah. and it's not like yeah i'm gonna adopt you but like all right i have to do the right thing in the situation and move forward and boy that is a happy and sad statement right there yeah exactly all my world will be good good in it but it's not even heavy At that point, if, it, if, I, if I was Matthew at this point, I'd be like, oh my god, just heard that. Okay, yeah, you're living with us for the rest of your life. Yes, come on, let's go. Yeah. Right then and there, I would have been like, yep, sorry, mm -hmm. this is happening. <laughs> yep, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Oh. Keep twisting that knife. Ow, ow, ow. Get it out of my side. Oof. Now, I, I do say, I, I think they made a little animation mistake here. Um, I think... Matthew is meant to look sad here. Yes. Instead, sleepy. he looks a little more like annoyed <laughs> and depressed. <laughs> um, and very difficult to get across that in animation. I think they were they were going for sad, but it just doesn't quite come across here. Wow. To that point, like she says, I can't wait for this. He can't move forward. Yeah. It just stops. Oh. The guy knows. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just and, and again, think about how children, you know, should behave back in the day. You know, climbs right up into the buggy, gets into a seat, just get all, all ready to go. Like just. Mm. <laughs> God. <laughs> just, just put a just like an automatic turner on that on that knife. Just. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, it, but again, this is made for children, and so you, you've got to... And it's not just, you know, reminding the audience, but this contrast between Anne and Matthew is fairly subtle for kids to kind of pick up on. So I think, you know, mentioning it a couple of times is important. And this is, like, in the book, too. Like, she, she mentions this multiple times in the, in, the, in the book. God, and he's just like, I don't... I don't care. <laughs> like, he doesn't know what that, and he's not saying that, but yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's very clear. He's just like, I have no words. <laughs> I have nothing. Because you have all I of do them. not know what to say. <laughs> you took all my words. And I can't get this knife out of my sight. Actually, it's no longer a knife. It's a bayonet. Thank <laughs> you, little girl. And I love her, her rich inner life of just, you yes. know, all of these things she's imagining. And to your point, I think Matthew's expression here is, you know, very indicative of what we're trying to get across here, where he's just like, okay, great, good for you. <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> yeah. don't know how to react to this. <laughs> Please, God, can we move? Can we do something? Uh, I don't know right. how this done? happened, but I'd like you're in total control, and I don't know how this happened at all. <laughs> and again, just kind of the the imagination, kind of the cuteness of just like, like a lady sitting here. Um, it does. Um, so they, they anime creators often talk about how to make a cute character. Um, and the thing is, you can't just give a girl pink hair and a bub bubbly personality. That can just be annoying. Characters are always cute in relation to other characters. Right. And so seeing how, what she says, how the people react to her, you know, those things make us feel for Anne in this situation. Right. And he smiles at that. He smiles. Mm -hmm. Note what they do here. When it gets started, she's surprised. And A, and I think they mentioned later, <coughs> she hasn't ridden a lot of buggies in her life. Like, this is not a thing that she has to do. Um, so she's a little surprised by that. But there's also the symbolism that she's not really quite ready for this to move forward. 
you know, a yeah. lot of baggage to work through. Shall be pointed out all throughout the sequence, and we're halfway through the episode, pretty much all the music has been upbeat. Mm-hmm. Um, very easy for all this knife twisting they're doing. Um, they don't push that on you in the music. That that is that is appreciable. There's your there's what you're talking about right there. Yeah. You know, Matthew, who's not really into into uh, getting along with others, kind of charmed by this little girl. Wow. Yeah. Self awareness. Uh, that's something you wouldn't expect. <laughs> You know, if she on really hand, works. Yeah. She on, on the one hand, it's kind of funny how she's just like, oh, yeah, I'm probably just diarrhea in the mouth right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and she goes, well, I can stop if you want to. Wanting to please. Yeah. Wanting yeah. to please. And just, you know, saying, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do what you want me to do. Just I don't want to go back there. Yep. That's exactly. very clear. Yep. So. Great point. This is getting across Anne's intelligence, right? That, right. She's not just flighty. She's not just distracted or whatever. Like, and it would be very easy to assume from these things and from like how talkative and, and so forth that she's um, she's just not bright. And it's like, no, no, no. She is clearly somebody who reads a lot, uses a lot of big words. So, a lot going on with the character. To your point, she is not stating this. She is asking him for approval. Yeah. yeah. And you see that, like, she's looking at him, she's very interested in how he'll react. When he says this, that's reasonable, she gets a smile on her face. Very focused on that, that approval. Ooh. Yeah. Um, and so, obvious symbolism, that's Anne in the center of the screen, right? Right. She is the scraggly tree that can't really grow because there's nothing there to to uh, nurture her um, even to the point where like everything's you know drab grays yellows um, oof there we go <laughs> yeah also notice what they're doing here we are pulling back from this Anne is leaving this behind you know this is receding into her past in her mind uh, just to you know Twist the bayonet even further. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. Um, so, it should be pointed out, um, this is the secret story of Anne of Green Gables. Um, Anne is traumatized. She's dealing with a lot of stuff. She doesn't know it. She doesn't realize how much her past has affected her. She comes, to Anna, she comes to Green Gables and she finds the support network that allows her to grow out of those traumas and process those traumas without her ever realizing that's what's happening. It's a very yeah. natural process of finding people who care about you, who can support you, etc. Um, and the, the tree is a perfect symbol for that because the tree doesn't know what's happening. The tree doesn't know if it's in a good or bad situation, it just does its best. And that's exactly what Anne's doing here. And it's just so interesting, again, all the different things they're, they're layering in here, that <laughs> she literally talks to trees. <laughs> I mean, first off, a li li little odd. But then she gets so attached to this, she feels bad leaving them. Just such an interesting combination of, of kind of a nurturing instinct, but kind of weirdly misplaced. Oh, Jesus age. I, 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 God. God. It's so cuckoo it. without the beheading. Yeah. Oh. And again, to be fair, they're twisting the knife on Matthew. Right. Um, they're laying out all the evidence why she should not go back there. <laughs> Just, it's just, just like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> the drama of having red hair. This, oh, it's the worst thing in the world. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> and Matthew's expression is just <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it's like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> this is <a> drama. <laughs> Little girl needs drama. some pills, man. <laughs> Xanax. Yeah. Have some. Have some medication. <laughs> now they're doing the Spielberg look, right? Where yep. she, she's something blowing her away. She looks. Now we're curious about what's happening. Mm. Gods, that's gorgeous. Yes. Like just, I don't, I don't care. Like that is just amazing. And then just to include the little ruts of the road just to, you know, remind us that's a road. Ah, man. So, you know, <clears throat> me being the cynical person that I am, mm. we could take this interpretation in another way, which is saying, mm. actually, this entire series is about Anne of Green Gables. She was actually found dead in the snow. And this is her fever dream before ah, she died. Ah, yes. This, this is on her <laughs> way to heaven. That's... No, that's not it at all, folks. That's not it at all, no. It's a beautiful rendering of something she's never seen before in her life. Yeah. Tucker would never and do she's that. She's loving he, it. He doesn't do stories about sad, dead children. Wait. No, no. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, no. And again, think of what they're implying here. <laughs> Anne has never seen anything this beautiful. Yeah. Hmm. Look at that. And we just go full on Fantasia. Yeah. Because <laughs> why not? Why not? And not wow. just that. Like, she is caught up in it. She is part of it. Hmm. And I also appreciate the expression on her face. Right? She's surprised. Like, she is enjoying herself, obviously. But it's like, this is just overwhelming her. And not only that, it transforms her because it makes her dress white. Yes. And no, like it, it literally, like they, they change its color over the course of this shot. So it's this sense that this is allowing her to change her self-conception by the emotions she's having. Also, the again getting back to kind of that 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 romanticism she has. Notice how she's standing uh, on here, mm -hmm. the, the arms back, you know, almost a Titanic, you know, shot. Um, this, the, the, the princess on the carriage. Um, <laughs> just all the emotions. And she stopped talking. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's enough to get her to shut up. <laughs> I'm kidding, you know, <laughs> but... <laughs> And notice how Takahata is kind of letting us rest with this, where she leaves, and we're giving he's giving us the silence, the reaction, um, as she's processing what she just experienced, and lets us experience it too. And it's at this point that I'm assuming, basically, she's had a long day. Yeah. So maybe like that euphoria, she's kind of crashing from that a little bit, and then. Like, from a pure physiological perspective, she just kind of doesn't have anything left. And no, we get all the way through, I, I'm assuming that's Avonlea there, um, all the yeah. way through town, you know, her quiet, poor Math Matthew having to deal with the emotional inner life of a young girl. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the, there's the bayonet again. <clears throat> yep. As he's, he, so what's interesting here is that she's already had her crash after seeing the the beautiful thing. She's tired and she's kind of she's kind of bringing up her little bit of a fear. Mm -hmm. He's been enjoying this ride in, in immensely as well, and now he has to come back to reality. Right. And he's just like, ah, uh, crap. <laughs> we do have another mile to go, and then we're there, and I'm gonna have to explain this. <laughs> And it should be pointed out, Matthew has no plan here. You know, right. It's not like he can go back and say, well, we'll just adopt a little girl. Like, he knows that's not going to fly. So, he's screwed as much as anyone else is. <laughs> there we go. You're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. That's a really neat effect. I don't even... Yeah. Um, how they've got the sun dappled through the trees and then the little rays of light dancing out. It's really cool. But like to, um, uh, to your point about things coming back home, 
now we get somber music. Yep. You know, it's the, the music is almost more for Matthew than for Anne. Um, and his realization of what do we do? And further, this realization he has, this is love. Yeah. Right? When you care enough about somebody to say, I wish they don't have to find out the truth so they could stay happy. I want this girl to be happy. Um, he's crossed the bridge. All right. Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my God. In, in Gundam, it's being slapped in the face with a 2 by 4 about war is bad, and this, we just get a bayonet and a gut that just <laughs> never stops twisting about... Oh, orphans and not knowing into the situation. They're oh god. Yeah. God. Exactly. It's kind of. Nuts. Um, it should also be pointed out. I'm just checking now. Um. Um, this is the first two chapters of the novel. Um, wow. We we we've, we've gotten so far. Um, which is. Anne arriving, and then Matthew taking her to the house. Uh, and that is out of... Let me just double check to see if I'm, if I'm speaking correctly. Um, um, in fairness, that is out of 38 chapters. Wow. So we're moving at a pretty good clip. Um, yeah. But even there, is there anything about the pacing here that you change? Not really. Not really. I mean, this is the, the kind of the, the interesting thing about this is that it's you're 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 drawn in, yeah. you're like the pacing works. It it tells the story, mm -hmm. and you're taking the time with with, you know, at first the narrator it's just like, explain, 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 <laughs> explain, and then you have this whole ride home, which is takes up like half the episode, and it's just literally when you stop and think about it, oh, they're just in 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 a buggy riding. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, right. Nobody's chasing them. They're not in a rush to get anywhere. They're just, you know, thing. And it's just her, you know, being in her surrounding. And then you're getting an idea of how of who she is and the starts and stops and, and things like that. And uh, it works. It, it, you know, makes you, um, you're just like, okay, okay. When's the shoe other shoe going to drop? And then, of course, you get to the end of the episode where Matthew finally goes, ah, crap. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just like, there's the other shoe. Yeah. But then it's the entire time you're like hopeful because she's hopeful. Yeah. And then Matthew gets into it, gets sucked into it, and then yeah. you're just like going, okay, everything's going to be fine, but will it? <laughs> well, and if you if you know the story of Anne Gables at all, you know that you know Anne gets to the house and it's it's a bit disappointing, you know, to to realize that you know she's not what they expected. I really appreciate the talk about how to push that off to episode two. Right. Yeah. If we ended the episode on that, like, it would be, you know, easy drama to end it on the big reveal and Anne being crushed. I would not want to watch the second episode of that anime. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, okay, I feel like going, okay, yeah, I had enough. <clears throat> Where's some Dor or Doraemon? All right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but still being mature enough to leave it on that sense of not quite dread, but that sense of you know that something less than great is going to happen. You, you, know, you know there's going to yeah. be some reckoning here with this situation coming up soon. Um, and of course, the next episode preview you know, makes it clear that's going to happen, but still, I think that was a, it's a good place to stop it. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, the hopes and dreams of orphans. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta smash them. Smash them good. <laughs> Smash them hard. Um, <clears throat> what would you say you you know about Anne's person? How would you describe Anne's personality at this point? Like what you've been what you've been presented. Um. So a very very vivacious, bubbly, inexperienced person. Like she is just at wonder of the world. Like part of me would be if I were Matthew in that buggy, just be going like, I ride through this thing every day, <laughs> right? <clears throat> you know, and and she's just like, <gasps> it's the best thing ever, you know, and everything's the best thing ever. She's mm -hmm. just, 
everything is new and just and you know just to to her and and she's trying to express all the words of that and instead of being quite i wouldn't say incoherent but mm. instead of you know like being able to say it in three or four sentences she just can't because there yeah. are no words so she has to you know just keep talking and you know poor matthew is just like going after a while it's just like going well might as well ride this way before it crushes me <laughs> so you know but uh but she no she is and then you would at first notice that you know here she is she's trying to be very pleasing and and but she's bubbly and she's hardly being able to contain herself and then there will be moments that you notice as Matthew notices during the ride where she suddenly gets a little quiet yeah. and she says some things and then you go oh crap there's stuff going on yeah. and she doesn't probably understand it very well at all yeah. and then th so that's you know Matthew's crux which is uh, for a person who is socially inept, how do I deal with this? Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, given how much Anne feels things, you know, how much yes. that's ramped up to know that you're going to, you know, throw more gasoline on that fire of, you know, when, when she realized it was going to happen here. Um, yeah. You know, what a, what a, what a terrible thing to, to realize. I, I love that, and I, I I love your recognition of her, and that that underlying trauma, that she's she can't even like express, but she's it's interesting like she's aware of her condition, like she she's aware of I, I should say she's aware of the conditions in which she lived, right? You know, she knows it wasn't fine. Right. <laughs> she's not delusional. Yeah, but um, she has apparently dealt with that through an overactive imagination, right? She just flies away in her mind to pleasanter places, and that's how she deals and processes. Um, and sometimes that's not the best way of dealing with situations. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you get the feeling that how would you rank, this is kind of a weird question, um, how would you rank the sort of severity of Anne's sort of traumas, right, and, and what Anne has to deal with? Like, does it feel like she's been, like, horribly treated? Does it feel like she's been just kind of neglected? Um, and not that traumas can be, you know, ranked, but, like, what's right. your feel on what her experience has been at this point? Well, her thing is, is that um, one of the things that should be noted is that she is an older child being adopted. One of the reasons why that they put in the little baby in the in the beginning of it, and they make I, I forgot to say this early on, but as the train is leaving, or as she, as Anne is leaving the train, you notice that with Mrs. Spencer, you notice that the ba that the really young girl is looking her head out. They want you to know that that's a really young girl being adopted. Anne is not young. So Anne understands that she is not being, that up until this point, no one has chosen her, right? No one has, has come out and said, I love your freckles and I love your red hair and I love your blue eyes and you're so cute in that hat. So I'm taking you home. Nobody has done that she's walking into a situation that we all know they're expecting a boy not her mm -hmm. and he that's why Matthew is just like so apprehensive about this because he can see that she is feeling very deeply that she is not chosen mm -hmm. and that's why she's so happy about this yeah. when you're when you're like somebody like me when I was adopted when I was like about this this freaking big mm -hmm. right and this is the only family you know that's not something you know or, or, or have uh, that's not something I had in my mind yeah. right you know I was, I, was a, I was a month old when I was adopted she's like 10 you know so when you have when you're 10 years old and you're coping with the idea that nobody wants me and then the only thing that you can that you remember of your life is this like dreary place where nothing grows nobody wants you you don't want to be there 
and you have this and you feel connection to a tree that's basically dying mm -hmm. and you know that's it, it's it's not abuse trauma but it's the the self almost like she's she's like one step away from hating herself and that's just yeah. you know just a, as as much of a horrible place to be as anywhere else mm -hmm. and so she's trying to keep ahead of that i think yeah. so I, I i i that's where i would put her i think it's and, just and yeah she's trying point, to stay ahead of it to that point she all obviously has self-loathing about her red hair um, yeah she kind of channels a lot of that into the red hair um she uses her imagination to try to get past her that those sort of that sort of sense of self-loathing uh, with the freckles and so forth. She's like, "Well, I can I can pretend I don't have those." Um, right. But like the red hair like grounds her back to the situation she's in. That imagination can only take you so far. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just checked the, the in, in the book. She is eleven. Eleven. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I feel like drinking whiskey right now. <laughs> I'm gonna have a stiff drink. Yeah, no, um, it is. but, but you know, but you know, it's interesting is that you know, as an adult, you can see all this, right? Yeah. But as a kid watching this, mm -hmm. obviously, you're not gonna get all that. Sure. But there's Takahara's successful in making sure that that kid knows. Oh, she's sad. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. So, so, and that's just as important to a little, to a, to a, to a kid who's watching this. That's just as important to understand as, as for adults to understand, ah, there's some bad stuff yeah. going on in that little head, you know. It's also worth noting how much they establish how, um, unique she is, right? Mm -hmm. that she uses big words, she talks a lot, she's not your average child, um, Anne of Green Gables, the, the novel, is very popular in Japan, which might surprise people, right? Like, why would this right. very Western novel work over there uh, in Japan? And from what I've read, a lot of folks, um, a lot of the, the people who respond to it are the people who were different as children, right? Who, who saw mm -hmm. themselves as different and thus saw themselves in Anne. And, you know, whether it's having red hair or not, it's, I was different. There was something different about me that other people didn't appreciate. And you definitely see that in Anne, where Matthew is the one person in her life who doesn't mind what makes her different. Yeah. Hmm. Such an uplifting thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, that is a lot of the message of, of what we, we we're getting so far in this, is... Mm -hmm. um, the importance of appreciating people for who they are. Mm hmm Yeah. Even if they're little chatterboxes. <laughs> little chatterboxes who unintentionally take a bang and then skewer your soul with it. <laughs> exactly. That is episode one of Anne of Green Gables. Any other thoughts? Oh, God, it's just episode one? <laughs> No, awesome. This is uh, very, very, a lot different, a little bit different from Gundam. A little bit different from Gundam. Well, no, and, and, a little bit. And actually, I, I want to, um, you know, mention that at, at the ending. Like, this does feel like a heck of a lot they accomplished in one episode. Yes, very much so. You know, um, very much is, so. This is this is how to do a first episode of a, of a kids anime right here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, cool. Yeah, looking looking. Looking forward to seeing where this goes. It's episode two. Episode two. Whew, that was a long analysis, but I think well-deserved. There is tons to see and think about in Anne of Green Gables. And, of course, we have this very specific kind of adaptation they're trying to do. It's different when you're adapting a, a light novel where there's more freedom in terms of how you adapt that. Anne of Green Gables is such a well-respected novel and they were clearly trying to be respectful of it so a lot to to unpack there uh, I do have an idea of what I'm going to bring to this arts and culture festival in a couple of weeks wanted to share this with you all I dug out my copy of starting point uh, 1979 to 1996 is that right yes uh, this is a series of essays by Hayao Miyazaki 
um, from 1979 to 1996. Whole bunch of things in here, and it's a whole variety of different kinds of things. Again, mostly text, but some images here and there. And it's really interesting seeing Miyazaki's perspective on things as he is evolving as an artist. Uh, so this is around the time of the release of Castle Cagliostro, moving on up through, I think, Porco Rosso. Um, and so what's cool is this is not like a blog. It's not him you know, writing a series of things on a particular theme. This is a, a bunch of different stuff that he wrote about and talked about and little bits of different programs that he, he wrote in, um, all sorts of different bits and pieces. Um, there are things on people, planning notes, um, proposals, all sorts of, of things, scrapbooks, ideas, etc. Um, really, really interesting, just a whole collection of his perspectives. So if you're looking to dig more into Hayao Miyazaki's uh, life, uh, this is a, a great way. And also kind of his perspective on things. This is a great way to do that. There's another one uh, that came out after this, 1996 to something. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is a really cool <clears throat> insight into the many different <clears throat> interests and thoughts of a, a great creator. I wish we had something like this for Takahata, but I've not been able to find much, but we have this at least. So again, if you're looking for more, starting point um, of with the Hayao Miyazaki's stuff in there. Really neat book. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this at the festival. We'll talk about Miyazaki and his career and how that intersects with Takahata as well. So should be should be fun stuff. But uh, yeah, that's the that'll be the plan for um, this festival. But anyway, I think that'll do it for us for this particular broadcast. Hope you found that useful and helpful. Uh, thank you for being part of all this. And until next time, watch more anime.